right out of the box, I thought my SLA printer was set up and good to go. I printed off several things really well, but then I started to have some issues. Some parts were only printing halfway. Some layers were sticking to the bottom of my vet. I was creating an army of three-legged animals. And my supports were breaking, or the part would peel off them. I started calibrating my printer by adjusting the exposure time, the single most important setting for print quality. But I found another setting that made a huge difference in the quality of my printing. So I'm going to show you what I did and how much better my prints are now. The calibration model I'm using has varying sizes of pegs, blocks, and holes. So it should look like this. But using my printer's standard settings gave me this. Several pegs are missing, a couple of walls aren't there, most of the holes in the middle of the board aren't even open, and then maybe half the holes in the back are open. So there's obviously some room for improvement. One of the most important settings on your printer is the exposure time, which is how long it takes to cure each layer of your print. My default setting is six seconds, so I did a few that were shorter, two, three, and four seconds, and a couple that were longer, eight and 10 seconds. Out of all those chips, I thought the four second one looked the best. I gained a peg in the front, filled in a hole on the left side. Most of the openings in the middle opened up, but I did lose a few holes in the back. I loaded up my Snorlax, and this is what I got. The first few layers have a longer cure time, so it sticks to the plate. But after that, four seconds wasn't enough time. The layers are too soft and rip off the plate and stick to the bottom of the vet. If I increase the time instead, there are some good things that show up. In the front, I get two new smaller pegs. I build a new wall on the left side, but in the back, I'm starting to lose some fine holes and details. Not to mention the holes in the center of the board are still non-existent. So far, we've only looked at the time aspect of exposure, but there's another setting that I think a lot of people may overlook, and that's the power. It's like trying to bake a cake with a blowtorch. Just because you have more heat doesn't mean you'll do it faster and better. I'm going to reduce my power to 90% and see if that helps anything. Turning down the power just 10% made a huge difference. Right off the bat, you can see in the middle of the chip, a lot of the openings have opened up. It also added a smaller peg and filled in the hole on the left side. Turning down the power with the 10 second exposure time did even better. You gain two new pegs in the front, a new wall on the left, and most of the openings in the back are open. Since the 10 second setting did the best, let's turn down the power a little bit more on that one. Turning the power down a little bit more to 80% showed a small improvement. It tried to build one smaller peg, and the wall on the left side got a little bit nicer. Since the power setting doesn't add any time to the build, I'm gonna keep this. Compared to the default setting, here are all the features I've added just from optimizing my exposure time and the power. At this point, I've greatly increased the quality of my prints, but I've added a lot of time, almost 70% per layer. That's gonna turn into hours for any print I do. So let's do one more quick test to see if I actually need to add this much time. The cones of calibration is another popular test, so I ran this to see how long it thinks my exposure time should be. The good news is it agrees my default setting is not long enough. However, it took 8 seconds for anything to even register, and then 10 seconds to improve on that, and finally 13 seconds to complete all the cones. I used the optimal settings from the previous test, and that actually made this one worse. The only thing left to do is to print with each setting and see which one does best. Needless to say, the default settings didn't even print the part. It failed right after the supports were made, but that's why we're here. The 10 second setting printed really well. Everything is crisp and clear and defined. And then the 13 second one also printed seemingly well, but when you zoom in, you can see that the holes are filled in a little bit more and it's a little more rounded. If we look at the top of the part where the weave gets a lot tighter, it's a similar story. The 13 second setting captured a lot of the details, but the 10 second setting was a little sharper. By increasing my exposure time from 6 seconds to 10 seconds and reducing my power from 100% to 80%, I've not only improved the quality of my parts, but the reliability is so much better. The downside is most of my parts take a few hours longer to make now, but I no longer have failed models, I'm not wasting resin, I'm no longer scraping plastic off the bottom of my vat. When I hit print, I know it's going to come out, and it's so much easier. If you're still not convinced, give it a shot yourself. Turn down your power 10% and see what happens. Please be sure to check out my other videos and thanks for watching.